Hi. Good evening, everybody, or good morning. Welcome to Facebook Live, TWR Facebook Live. Um, I am here in Dharamsala, India, in a beautiful place in Norbu House. So it is a little bit late for me here. It's uh, about 11.30 in the night and uh, still have a little bit of jet lag. So, uh, but I will promise I will not fall asleep during I'm speaking, but I might fall asleep during meditation. Um, so, so today's um, topic, uh, it's a meditation on dissolving the ego. So, uh, of course, uh, it's a, a very fancy title. Um, seems like a something we all would love to, like to have that experience, and something that every yogi, every practitioner wish to have, but maybe everybody kind of struggle to have experiences of dissolving the ego. So, so before I go into that, I, how is all of your experience or meditation are happening? Have you all been doing practices? Have you all been doing uh, five times uh, informal practices? Have you all been reflecting for last three years of your mood, your patterns of your thoughts, emotions, and recognizing how these pat mood, patterns of thoughts, emotions are affecting one's well-being, health, or any conditions that you have, or any, the, the reality, the situations that you have created in your life, does that correspond? Basically, have we create our reality, our environment, because of, based on our view, thoughts and emotions. And uh, by reflecting, we recognize very clearly, and so by reflecting, we feel it's possible to change. So have you been doing practices? Have you feeling any changes? So this is, a, I think, a, since the last topic, we discussed about it, so I hope that uh, uh, you all are doing the practice and are feeling some uh, effect, so not giving up and practicing continuously. And those of you who are coming first time, I would recommend to look the previous uh, Facebook Live, which is recorded and uh, which is on my Facebook. So, meditation on dissolving ego, um, so let's think about a few things. Meditation on dissolving ego, meditation on dissolving pain, meditation on dissolving body. Uh, so if you think about like in ancient practices, like in Dzogchen, the great system of great perfection, there's a lot of hist historical accounts where many yogis and masters have achieved body of light, light a so-called rainbow body. Uh, so how they achieve the body of light, how they achieve the rainbow body, is because they actually, that power of their meditation and awareness, they dissolve entire their body into a light in the, in the moment of the death, moment in the process of dying, they are able to dissolve entire their physical body matter into light. Uh, just imagine, you know, um, how powerful that that would be. So, if that is possible, um, then obviously the dissolving our pain, that's possible, so that we, um, during last couple of meditations, uh, we have a number of you have experiences that, 
when we were working on idea of you are not your pain and the, if you are able to separate yourself from your pain, if you are able to more connect with awareness, able to see through that awareness your pain, then the chances of um, clearing and healing the pain is much more there. And also I saw many comments that people have made that, uh, that how it has helped them to cope better release and sometimes people have said the first time they have able to get rid of long-term pains they are experiencing so those are i think is amazing so that that basically means that you are clearly able to overcome your physical and emotional pain that means you are able to dissolve your physical and emotional pain so if you are you are able to deconstruct your physical body, you are able to deconstruct your emotional and physical pain. Reason why we are able to do those is because um, one will one will or one is able to dissolve the ego. So so let's talk about that a little bit. So if you are able to dissolve your ego, if you are able to liberate your ego, then you are able to dissolve your pain, then you are able to dissolve your physical body, which is a product of that ego. So they are all, all this sense of deconstructing body, pain, ego, or dissolving body, pain, ego, or liberating, achieving liberation of, from this pain, body, and ego, they all kind of mean the same thing, right? So basically, uh, the, the principle is the same. So, so let's talk about a little bit on a level of personal experiences, how we, how we would do that. Or, or maybe the question will be many times in our life when we are, um, when we feel lost, when we feel disconnected, when we feel like a, having issues of identity and when we have those experiences in in a way we do not know who we are they not having sense of clear ego so some sense going through natural uh, therapy sessions or mainstream therapy sessions is kind of finding a clear identity uh, identity with the clear boundaries and uh, so so basically some sense we are trying to find that identi identity, but here in this case we are talking about dissolving the identity. So uh, finding one versus dissolving, I think that's a very good question. And I usually think that people who do not have uh, a clear sense of themselves or people who are very much lost, disconnected, maybe it's the idea of dissolving ego might be a little bit more challenging uh, because they don't kind of know what to dissolve because there's no, not something very clear uh, where they identify with. But when somebody has too strong of, of sense of self, a very strong sense of identity, that uh, which basically becomes a big problem in life, that your strong, too strong sense of I becomes a conflict, a source of conflict with everybody else because you always wanted to be the one, the main one, the big one, the important one, the right one, the true one, and um, and then you run into problems with everybody else. So, so anyway, so the idea of sense of I, this is what we are talking. So let's look a little bit more closely in our life like is this a sense of I think about any given moment in your life maybe think about this particular moment in your life when you feel challenges When you feel hurt, 
when you feel lost, when you say, I feel hurt, I feel pain, I feel pain, I feel hurt. I, 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 it, it really hurts me, I feel hurt. So think about that, That's the, this experience, when you, when you feel that, Let's, for a moment, it's like a camera. You know, you have a camera facing out, and then you press this little camera button up there, which that's what which I do, and then it faces you. So let's face a little bit like that. You look at inside yourself, and look at that clear sense of, I feel hurt. I feel pain. Trying to find it. Where can you find it? So as I'm speaking, I want everybody to try this. Sit comfortably. Reflect inward. Remember those words or feelings that when you say, I feel hurt. Who is that? Observe directly. Observe nakedly. It's like a, a very powerful lens, camera lens. You're zooming in, you're getting closer, 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 closer to that sense of I, or to that sense of one who is experiencing the pain. Closer, 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 closer. Like a camera, some point you do not see any particular image. You see, uh, simply you see uh, pixels of light. You go closer, 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 then you don't see even those pixels of light. It's just become a space a clear, open space. When it becomes a clear, open space, that is the moment we say, meditation on dissolving the ego. So you are meditating, you are contemplating inward, looking non-conceptually, looking closer, 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 to the point you don't see any more a sense of solid self there, but you see more like a, a just a, a presence of light, like a pixels of light. And then if, 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 when you go even closer to that, then you don't see anything, even not pixels of light, you just simply see a space, clear space. So when you experience the clear space, that is when the ego actually has dissolved. So in a way, maybe it's like a, there they are like a hundreds and thousands of uh, ego there inside. In a way that every single pain its product of one specific ego, or every single disease, a blockages, it's also a product of very specific ego inside. So ego, the sense of self, is actually creating those things. We talk about the reality, we talk about what you perceive, 
And we don't talk so much about what you perceive has to do something with the perception of self. How you see yourself is how you see the reality. The reality that you have created is nothing more than created by limitations or perception of self. If the perception of self is greater than, than the reality you have created, then the reality that you have or reality that you live in will expand more. Your world will expand more, your world will grow more, your world will be developed more, your world will be clearer more. That means there is more sense of space, awareness, warmth, sense of freedom in your world. Because a sense of perception of self is much more expanded than before. So in a way that what we have been talking about, the dissolution of pain or physical pain or dissolution of emotional pain, um, the reason why we are able to unblock those or heal those things is because we are able to make some shift and change in perception of self. Or that, in other words, we are able to make ex dissolve the ego, expand the sense of self more. Therefore, what what that ego has created will be also deconstructing by itself because no one else is grasping anymore. So it's very much like a, um, I always talk about if you leave a hundred dollar bill in the street, in a crowded street, and then leave it in the evening, and then tomorrow morning you go back and extend, uh, trying to find it, probably very likely you will not find your hundred dollar bill there. Why? That hundred dollar bill has been self-liberated. So. What does that mean that hundred dollar has been self-liberated? That means no one was actually grasping it. Therefore, it has liberated by itself. Somebody, somebody took away because no one, no one actually is holding on, grasping on it. The reason why the the blockages physical pain, emotional pain, they stay there, they stay there for many years because somebody in there is making sure they are com continuously there, they are safe there. And sometimes, not only that, there is somebody who is even making them stronger, deeper, more rooted kind of pain. The, the only time when we are able to dissolve those things is when we are able to dissolve the ego. So dissolving ego helps dissolving the pain, dissolving the how you say the dissolving the body. So deconstruction of body, deconstruction of pain, and it happens because deconstruction of ego. So some point liberation is liberation from ego. Liberation is not liberation from, from outer manifestation, not from your pain, not your from negative emotions, but truly a deeper sense of liberation is from your self, the ego. That is, in the teaching, in the Dharma, that's ultimate, you know, ultimate, because the, the ego or the grasping mind it's the, it, is, it is the one which produces every single pain and emotion. So, so let's uh, do a short meditation on exactly on this. So I want for a moment uh, everybody can um, stop typing, clicking anything.
take five deep breathings. Be fully aware of the stillness in your body, silence of the speech, the spaciousness of your mind. Feel deep sense of resting in the stillness, silence, spaciousness, in inner stillness, the inner silence, inner spaciousness. and be aware of reference to self, like when you say, I feel hurt. How, how often you use word I, how strongly you use word I, how strongly you define yourself, defines yourself with that sense of I, or how strong that sense of I becomes a, a source of conflict with others. How, how often it becomes a division, separation from others. How often you feel that disconnectedness with the rest of the world, with, this, with that sense of I. That very I, just feel that. How do you feel? How often do you feel? Where do you feel? And gradually look inward, like a turning the camera's face inward, and observe nakedly, directly, and then like zoom in. closer, closer, closer to that sense of I, wherever and however you're experiencing it, just directly going toward that and going closer and closer with the open lens.
As you go closer and closer and closer, this sense of, like a stronger sense, clearer sense of self, like it dissolves, like looking at the image, zooming in becomes dissolves. It, it does not look any more like a face or person or something, but it's more, rather becoming a light or pixels of light. As you go closer inward toward that sense of I, and it just, even that pixels of light dissolves and just becomes more clear space. Not only I'm saying that, I want all of you experience that, that truly now I feel there is no that sense of self, it's just a light, pixels of light, or even it's just a space, a clear space, a pure presence. If that is true, that is resting there without elaborating it, is the meditation on dissolving the ego. So rest there for a moment. Okay, you can open your eye. Just for a moment, you're clear, there's a presence, without that particular I, the ego. Okay, so, so I'm happy to hear that if you, if you all have a, wanted to share your experiences with dissolving your ego, how do you feel? Is it possible to do that? Just think about it, that uh, causal relationship, if there is environmental issues, if there is relationship issues, if there is a disease, if there is uh, blockages in the body, if there is pain in the, in the body or in, in deep wound, these all are created Basically, these all are created. They are all, not only they are created, but they are held by, saved by, by ego. And as long as the ego is there, it, it, it survives. It stays there and stays continuously for a long time. So in order to dissolve them, it's not like you're trying to dissolve them something outside, trying to change something, you're trying to change your reality outside, that's not going to happen. Unless you change something inside, the one who have created, or at least the one who is grasping on it, is not allowing it to liberate. So there is no actual self-liberation. The only way to have the self-liberation is to actually dissolve the ego, the one who has created, and the one who is keep continuously grasping in it. That's what it is. So if, if you look any situation in a life, either it's a disease or pain or a sickness or conflict, they're not going to go away un, un, unless there is something inside you 
a particular ego, a particular kind of ego, which is responsible, directly linked, connected to those situations or those blockages, pain, and you are able to make shift to that, and the outer situ outer world is automatically going to change. And this is what what between the good practitioner, good meditator, and a bad meditator, is good meditator trying to work on level of I, level of personality, the bad meditator trying to change the situation outside without me trying to make any changes inside oneself, or the ego, or the personality, is always trying to change outer situation, running away from the place, running away from the relationship, running away from the responsibility, avoiding the pain, denying the pain, and this is what most of the time people do. And the fact you are denying it, you can never deny it. Or the fact you are denying it, you can never get rid of it. By denying it, by suppressing it, is clearly confirmation of that you are not able to get rid of it. So I, I, I don't know why we do that, because maybe in some, some sense we think we're able to make some changes there, but the truth is, by just, just say this, the fact you are denying it or suppressing it, it confirms that you are stuck with it, you are not free from it, and you are you will not able to be free from it as long as you keep denying. But when the moment you able to address the I, the ego, the creator, the grasper, the saver, the, the guard, you are able to make any shift on that sense of self, then everything what you have created will automatically self liberate that's the beauty of our beauty is what called self liberation it will go by itself because nobody's nobody's holding on it like the 100 dollar bill in the street so so how is your meditation well, i i don't see much comments here today seems like a uh, uh, quiet here So how is your meditation? And uh, very good. Karin, thank you. Steve saying good start, that's great. Mirna, good. Bob saying, let go, <laughs> okay. Okay, so you know, um, basically the sense of self which is absolutely necessary, but also the sense of self which is what creates all the problems. No self, no problem. Even uh, there are meditation. There is one meditation. It says when you have a headache, when you have a headache, you visualize that you do not have a head. If you if you are successfully able to visualize you do not have a head, then you do not have a headache. So same way, if you are able to dissolve the ego then everything that particular ego have created, it dissolves by itself. Uh, that's, the, that's the only way how the how rainbow body happens. That's only how true healing happens. Because some a shift in the sense of I is level of perception changes. So these are the, you know, I think it's a beautiful, um, in, in a way, 
if it's like going to the right right place to work rather than going to the wrong place to do work and expect some great outcome that's not going to happen so i hope that um, this session was helpful and uh, i i know like uh, it's almost like a after midnight here in India, and uh, I was clearly a little sleepy. Now I'm more awake fully. <laughs> so, and uh, next um, Thursday, so I will continue with the question and answer. So, if anybody have some questions and answers, I say questions. So please go ahead, um, post there, and then uh, I will select some question and trying to answer them and uh, also I'm not exactly sure how many languages are translated in I know that there are a number of and in it has been uh, maybe Mariella can let us know how many uh, language these uh, Facebook live has been translated in right now so we clearly uh, going uh, hoping up to our 12 languages or more language, 12, more than 12 languages will be translated. Um, yeah, and then once we finish this seven, uh, seven week cycle, we will, we have, we are trying to work on creating a, uh, a plan here now. We, what we're going to do is for 10 day uh, meditation uh, every day we'll meditate on uh, clearing clearing a pain uh, for 10 days every day we'll have a guided meditation and uh, we'll organize in a way that um, based on the languages so that uh, each country will have one one person who will guide the meditation uh, uh, I'll, I'm going to train all everybody, and then we'll have the guided meditation by those people. For I'll start first day, and then they will continue for eight days. Then I will start another last day, so a ten-day meditation. I think uh, so. I, I am very excited about. We are right now planning, work, working out the details. So as we know more things about it, we will let you all know. So thank you very much, and uh, if you are. It's a good night. It's a good morning. I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye now.